Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to installment number seven of Boston College's student mission program virtual panels. Uh, I'll be joined by four panelists. One is still using the power of technology to join us. Three panelists you see on the screen right now. And we're trying to engage with the class of 2024. Can you believe there's a class of 2024? Um, saying that to my seniors that are the class of 2020. <clears throat> Tonight's focus is outcomes. It's about students that are heading off into the many, many different directions that our students head off to after their time at Boston College is done. Uh, we have topics, we've had a few topics about seniors, about the spiritual life, about the academic focus. We have many more that are planned in the month of, of April. This is an important one. Uh, this is the one that we figure we're going to have a lot of people tuning in, in and out of and watching the recording of because people are interested in what the return of an, on their investment is going to be. They come to college with a plan and they want to see how that plan is going to work out. So we're going to talk tonight about how students look at their plan after graduation in the admissions process. What are the resources on campus? What are the big helpers in the decision-making process for students? Uh, what are the big resources at Boston College that, can, that they can utilize in order to help them sort out what the big options are for them after they graduate? So <clears throat> what I'm gonna ask the panel to do is introduce themselves. And in, uh, in the, your introduction, if you could just say who you are, and if you use a Boston accent, that's fine. Who you are, where you're from, uh, what your major focus program was, um, and then if you could talk a little bit about where you'll be off to uh, when it's official and your time at Boston College is done. Uh, hopefully our fourth panelist will join us in the midst of these um, uh, introductions. And I usually have you guys introduce yourselves in alphabetical order of your first name. So that means Bridget. Okay. <laughs> you're first, so fire away. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Bridget Merriman. I'm a senior. I'm in the College of Arts and Sciences, and I studied sociology and biology on the pre-med track. So this August, I'll be attending Boston University School of Medicine. Um, oh, shoot. I already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's okay. perfect. Just a real <laughs> basic snapshot of who you are and where you're headed. That's, that's great. Thanks, Bridget. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Grace. Um, I'm from Buffalo, New York. At BC, I was in the College of Arts and Sciences and an economics major. I'm also an art history minor, which I kind of decided to throw in there at the last minute and I've really enjoyed. Um, besides that, next fall, I'm going to be headed off to law school at the University of Pennsylvania. So I'm excited for that. Great, great. Next introduction will be Gian. Hey everyone, my name is Gian. I am a senior over the uh, Carroll School of Management studying operations management and then I minor in medical humanities, health and culture and the larger Morris Steel College of Arts and Sciences. And next year I'm actually going to be starting my full-time role with General Electric Healthcare after having spent two summers with them and I'm going to be doing their two-year rotational program. Great. <clears throat> Whilst you're last, and you were going to be last anyway, <laughs> uh, because uh, of the alphabetical order we were going in. But if you could just introduce yourself and what you studied at Boston College, then uh, where you're going when uh, your official time at Boston College is, is done. Absolutely. Pardon my tardiness. And it's kind of weird that you said studied, you know, using the past tense already for me as a senior. <laughs> but nice to meet everybody. I'm Walsh. I'm a senior in the Carroll School of Management studying finance. I also have minors in the Morris Car College of Arts and Sciences in math and music. And uh, upon graduation, I'll be joining the workforce as well, just like Gian, and I'll be going to Deloitte Consulting, working in their New York office in their strategies and operations competency group. All right, so I'm going to start. I'm going to throw a few questions out to all of you, and you can jump in as you like, um, but hopefully everyone has enough chances to, uh, to answer some questions. And I want to talk about when you were at the stage that the future class of 2024 is at, and how much the medical school admissions process, how much the job prospects how much the law school process weighed into your decisions. When you asked, were you asking questions? Were you, would you have a, attended a seminar or webinar like this when you were a senior in high school? Or did it, were, you, were you just not there yet? Um, so just tell me how much this was a part of your process for college and maybe even how you chose a college. Absolutely. Um, I can start. So I've known, I've, wanted to do medicine and be a doctor for years and so when I was looking at colleges one of the stats that was really scary to me was that 40% of applicants 
for med school actually get in. So 60% of any given year do not get into medical school. And so for me, I was looking at colleges of who had the higher percentage of accepted students and Boston College had upwards of 80% each year. So your chances of getting in were pretty much doubled. And I was like, oh my gosh, the proof is in the pudding at Boston College. What are they doing that get their students in? And so that's kind of what hooked me. And then as I came and I started to learn about what the differences were that BC had, I grew more and more excited and was so confident. So. Great. How about someone else? For me, the complete opposite. I wish I knew my calling uh, years before having even uh, applied for BC or any college in general. But for me, it was not um, something on my radar at all. In fact, I only started going to these informational meetings, which I love talking about, so I'm so happy to be a part of this panel, um, just because I just wanted to learn like what was out there. I was in the mindset that I applied to some business schools, applied to some more so liberal arts colleges without a business program. And so when I got into business school, I was like, okay, well, now what? I knew I wanted to study business, but didn't know exactly where what that meant. And so that's why I ultimately took that time through the Career Center, uh, through reading all the newsletters that come in, especially for School of Management students, you get a, a different newsletter. Um, I'm sure Bridget and Grace, they have their own respective newsletters between Medicine Law School and everything in between. But I ultimately used those opportunities not to figure out what I wanted to, um, to do post-grad, but actually what I wanted to study. Because I felt like no better way to figure out what you want to do than speaking with people four years out the gate, 15 years out the gate. And I let that then inform me what I wanted to study. So I was on the complete opposite end of Bridget for sure. Perfect. <clears throat> Thanks for proving this isn't scripted in any way. You've already thrown everything <laughs> off. Well done. <clears throat> but it, seriously, let's talk about freshman year. Let's, all right. So whether you had a plan or you didn't have a plan, here you are as a freshman. And it's no longer your parents' plan, your family plan, or very easy plan. Now it's independent of everybody, and you got to do it yourself. Can you talk about resources, whether they're official resources or unofficial resources, that you guys used as freshmen to help you along the way of either the plan originally or to sort out a plan? Yeah, I definitely can talk a little bit about that. Um, I think one thing BC is really good about is kind of pushing reset resources at you from every direction. I mean, it kind of seems like this is really helpful for law school later and then um, like prep classes for the LSAT and stuff when I was studying for that. We get so many emails all the time about what our interests are. So like if you're signed up for um, the pre-law track or in the Bellarmine Law Society, you'll get emails all the time about internships, about, you know, one-on-ones with mentors that you can have to kind of guide your, your process on that. So I think there was no, no shortage of guidance um, from BC. I think like every email I got, I got, get them all the time. First of all, it's still even now, you know, in quarantine, we can have one-on-ones via Zoom with um, guidance counselors. So. Mm -hmm. um, I'd absolutely say the same for me coming from the business school that there were so many resources. John was mentioning, you know, the newsletters that we get, the career centers, et cetera. But I think that some of the biggest resources that I utilized in terms of getting a job for me was definitely the current students that were already going through the process. Uh, you know, as a freshman, I had TAs who were seniors, teaching assistants who were going through their recruitment process already. And so I got to talk to them about how they were discerning what exactly they wanted to do and how to go about it. And from there, you know, seeing how they were utilizing the BC Alumni Network, which is just so vast and just really solid in terms of reaching out to current students and saying that they knew how they felt when they were in our shoes at school and just hearing how they were giving support of giving mock interviews, of looking at your resume, and ultimately, you know, getting you that interview in the door to get you to the places that you want to be. So I think for me, looking at, you know, Matt, my teaching assistant for one of my freshman business classes or looking at Isaiah, who also was a tour guide and panelist who um, really helped me throughout the process of getting the job that I currently am going to right now. I think just seeing how people at BC just try to want to help other people at BC um, is really cool, regardless of what profession you want to go into. Uh, Isaiah thought he was the greatest tour guide. <laughs> of course he did. Well, well done, remember that one. Um, a couple of you alluded to it, but let's get into it a little bit deeper. And maybe all of you guys have, have uh, an answer to this. Talk about the role of faculty, 
the role of faculty as you're sorting out job prospects, certainly the role of faculty in terms of the law school, medical school track, because they're partners with you. They're, they're writing letters of recommendation. Uh, they're, they're getting, you know, very much in, involved with you from, from the point that you know that you're going to apply. Um, so maybe all of you have a member of the faculty or stories about a number of faculty that have helped you along the way. So why don't you talk a little bit, each of you, a little bit about how faculty help mold you to get to the outcome that you're headed towards now. Yeah, I, I can, can start. Oh, okay. no, 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 you go ahead, Walt. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, so in terms of faculty, uh, there are two people that I can uh, say off the top of my head that really influenced uh, kind of my vocational discernment that happened at BC. One was my freshman advisor, uh, Professor Joe Sioni. He um, was just an advisor for me academically, but just talking to him about what I wanted to do, where I saw my talents, what um, the world kind of needed of me, all these ideas that kind of float around BC. He was really good in helping me just talk through what I wanted to do with my education because coming in as a freshman and as a senior in high school, I wasn't necessarily thinking about, you know, what job am I going to have coming out of this place? I was a lot like Gian, just kind of not knowing where to go. But I think that having these conversations of you have the talent to get into a school like BC. What are you going to do with these talents once you get out? I think having those clarifying conversations really helped me and led me to the second person uh, that really helped me at BC, Professor Darren Kisgin. Uh, I took investment banking with him. And so that's a lot more focused after I figured out that I did want to go into professional services, into financial services, um, just talking with him about his experience. Uh, a lot of the faculty here at BC will have experiences not only in academia, but also in industry as well. So to hear him talk about what he was doing day to day as a banker and how he transitioned from there to BC and just everything that he picked up along the way. Um, just having them as, you know, not only role models, but just um, guideposts in how you see your whole career planning out is really, really helpful. And so those two definitely really helped me. Uh, Bridget, why don't you go ahead? Um, awesome. So one thing that I do want to say was so outstanding when I first came to BC was a support from faculty and not only just guided towards what can we help you do after BC, but every step along the way, making sure that my freshman year transition went well and that I wasn't falling behind in classes or they were pointing me towards clubs and activities that they thought I'd be involved in or I'd like to be involved in. And one professor who was over the moon and my best mentor was uh, Dr. Wolfman. And unfortunately, he did pass away this year due to cancer. But as a freshman, he told me that he would make me get into medical school. And he was a chemistry researcher. Like he wasn't a doctor. He didn't go to medical school himself, but he was so invested in his students that he read over my resume. He asked me who I was going to have write my letters of rec for school, asked me what I was doing in the summers. Every semester he checked up on me. And I've had so many professors do that same thing. It's just um, a testament to how much faculty here care about you. Gian, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so immediately what, come to, what comes to mind is uh, Dean, Dean Sullivan. He's over in the Carroll School of Management, and he is at the top when we're talking at the, about the business school, yet he has, and much like the rest of the faculty members on campus, an open door policy. I have never walked by his office, and his office wasn't closed unless there was somebody, of course, in there. And so right from the beginning, he's been my advisor since freshman year. I would always just go to him about all my vocational discernment questions and he has all the connections because imagine he's the dean of the school of management so um, he was the one that actually opened the door for me to really explore healthcare because I told you I was going to be going full time um, but before I even knew that I wanted of course to make it into the hospital but I'm in a separate boat of Bridget right I'm not pre-med I'm not studying bio or anything like that and so I wanted to see it from the more business standpoint and I actually just Went to go see D Dean Sullivan. I said, hey, I have this passion for healthcare. I'm in business school. How am I going to figure this out? And he actually hooked me up with um, research with Professor Delvin Parker, uh, who works in the operations department. And since then, I've served as a research fellow for Boston Children's Hospital, which has been a really pivotal point of me realizing, hey, healthcare is a really big passion of mine. And that Yes, there is a space for those to go into healthcare, even from a business management standpoint. And so um, I don't know where I'd be without Dean Sullivan, for sure. Grace. Yeah, I was going to kind of um, mention it from the angle of letters of recommendation, because, of course, that's kind of what I was dealing with. And I'm sure Bridget was dealing with, too, with um, med school apps. 
So I, first of all, it's pretty hard to choose who you want to, who you want to ask to write your letters of recommendation because you kind of like have such a great, good a, array of options at BC. I mean, I've had so many professors over the years who are just, they love teaching and teaching is their joy. So any interaction with a student, they just love open office hours, like loved for you to come in and discuss anything in class that's going on. Um, so it was kind of hard to choose for me who I wanted to write my letters of recommendation. But I ended up getting some really great, great letters. And I think for grad school, obviously, your test scores and your GPA are really important. But then the next third most important thing is probably letters of recommendation, because, you know, they're a testament to how you've performed in past classes and what kind of person you are, really. Um, so I think from that angle, I really, my, all my professors at BC were just so great about it. I'm trying to catch up on a couple of questions that people sent in. Uh, people do have the option of sending in questions. I know we're covering a lot. Um, someone asked uh, specifically about you, Grace, and whether you considered Boston College and the yes. accelerated program that BC had. Yes. Okay. So I did, well, just uh, without the accelerated program, I did consider going to BC Law School and I applied and I got in, which I was so excited about. And I, that really like was one of my top choices um, besides the University of Pennsylvania, but because my sister's actually going to the University of Pennsylvania this year and my family's pretty Philadelphia centric, it just made more sense for me to spend the next three years there instead of um, continuing on in Boston. But in terms of the three year accelerated program, I considered it, but I didn't, it, it wasn't, I, I think that's a great program for some people, but I really wanted to spend my junior year abroad and I ended up doing that in London the whole year. So I felt like the three year program, I don't think that, I don't necessarily think that works um, if you do that. So that, that is where I was with that decision. Hey, great answer. University Penn's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited, I'm things. excited. I mean, I'm gonna miss Boston now. Boston, you can't really beat the city of Boston. <laughs> That's right. Uh, although Walsh is going to New York, someone asked, where are you going to be, Walsh? So I'll be at Deloitte. It's normally a big auditing accounting firm, but they do have a consulting arm, uh, consulting where you just solve problems of other companies, from what I understand. And so I'll be doing that. Uh, what my job will look like is that I'll be traveling to a client site Monday through Thursday, um, kind of just walking through their problems uh, and just basically problem solving. And so We'll see how that goes, but I'm really excited to be in New York. But as a Boston native, I do, again, have that bias towards Boston being superior in many ways. <laughs> That's good. That's good, Walt. I like it. Um, <laughs> so for Bridget and Grace, if you can talk just um, any specifics that you took advantage of during your medical school admission or your law school admissions process, uh, MCAT review or essay review or meeting with advisors, specific things that BC resources uh, made available to you that were particularly helpful for you when you were going through the process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, BC has great test prep courses. They do that for the LSAT, the MCAT, I believe the GRE and also the GMAT. So those are you sign up and while you're at school, it's probably they're like evening courses. So I think there may be like three hours twice a week and you go and review you have a tutor it's small class sizes maybe 10 other people um so actually i i took the lsat twice um the first time i took it i did well but i didn't do i mean i didn't get my goal score so i wasn't exactly like completely satisfied with it um in between taking it the first time and the second time i took it i took a bc test prep course and the second time i took the lsat my score raised by six points, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with the like LSAT scoring system, but that is a huge, huge increase. So I kind of think like, geez, that BC test prep course was really worth it for me. Um, so that was a great resource that I used. Great, great. Bridget? Yeah, I would totally agree. So um, I also did the test prep course um, for the MCAT. It's half a semester. So for me, it was the beginning half of spring semester and like Grace said twice a week um, at night and the biggest help that I found was test taking strategy because for me um, content I just had to learn it on my own like you figure out which study ways work best for you but the MCAT and a lot of other standardized tests like you guys know are strategy based like do you know um, 
how to eliminate answers you know are wrong, what to do when you're trying to make an educated guess, how to time yourself. Um, the MCAT is seven hours long, so you have to figure out how to stay focused, how to stay energized. And so those strategies are what I learned and I think made the difference. Um, and then in terms of essay review and personal statement review, I gave it to anyone and everyone I could in the pre-health department. So the pre-health advisors themselves, I gave my personal statement to, and then throughout the year that you're applying, they call it the application cycle. We have deadlines where we submit essays um, every couple of months. So the first month we submit a personal statement draft, um, or the first deadline, I'm sorry. Um, we submit a personal statement draft and then essays about why medicine, uh, a health rate, health related activity, another extracurricular that means a lot to us, and then diversity. And they help us work through those because with a lot of grad school applications, you also have to write supplemental essays and they almost all attack those questions. So if you have really good drafts built, you can plug those in and turn your applications around really fast. Um, and then most helpful was interview practice because interviews are where you make or break because at this point in the game you're all great students like you can academically succeed in graduate schools it's can you connect as a person are you the type of person they want to invest in and so interviews are really that make or break spot so they gave me real-time feedback we did practice interviews and doing these panels um, i had so many questions that i get from you guys like why i chose bc what my favorite class was so constantly practicing those verbal interaction skills, that was a huge, huge help. That makes sense. <clears throat> and if, if John Walsh, you can talk a little bit about sort of the campus-wide resources for people that are seeking professional advice. Uh, what are the things that happen on campus? Who are you hearing from? Uh, and and that, that includes a lot of your friends too that are seeking to go right into the working world after graduation. If you can just comment on what some of those things are at Boston College, and if you took advantage of those things. Yeah, I can start. Um, in terms of our career center, it's always really active, not only in terms of the one-on-one -one resume building, LinkedIn building, or the mock interviews that happen uh, across a spectrum of industries. They also have a really big presence on campus in terms of getting companies to meet students. And so in the fall, we have our career fair where hundreds of companies just come in line, Conti Forum, where our hockey and basketball teams play, which is really helpful. You get to meet recruiters, meet current employees, a lot of whom are already see alumni, so you have to talk with them. And that's the way with financial service, giving out donuts in the full time, something like that. And so these companies are coming up with a core knowing that he has the talent to fill their workforce. And so you have, you know, a plethora of opportunities to go and find a specific company, a specific, you know, vertical or what have you in terms of meeting people, getting some free stuff and free food, while at the same time kind of, you know, casting your net as wide as possible because all the opportunities that you're looking for are all coming off the campus. And I'm just being... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we lost him. Come oh, back. Come back. <laughs> John, why don't you pick up from there? Yeah, no, so I'll try to reiterate what I was hearing from Walsh. I heard donuts and I'm like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you heard that. Um, so I, Walsh and I have similar perspectives on this. So yeah, like what Walsh said, the Career Center is very comprehensive in the kind of resources that you can take advantage of. Even as early as my freshman year, I just figured, you know, why not take advantage of those things? So already as early as freshman first semester, I was going in for cover, cover letter workshops, resume workshops, interview prep, and much like with Bridget, it's general, right? Um, but then as soon as you start getting to Nero, you could actually then get paired in the Career Center with the field that you want. So if it happens to be public policy and political science, there's one there, education, volunteer, volunteerism. And so it just gets nearer and nearer as you figure it out. And of course, there's also a great deal of, of advice in regards to where you fall as you continue to explore. Um, so the Career Center is very thorough in that regard. And what Walsh was saying that we heard a little bit about the donuts is that what's so great about these informational sessions is that they're very low key. So yes, we have this really big career fair that happens both in the fall and the spring. 
but every single week there's also very small settings where there's like maybe in a classroom 30 students and an alum and it's everybody from like maybe two years out the gate or like I said 15 years out the gate so just a wide range of who you hear from and I love that as a freshman because you know back then I had no idea what I wanted right I didn't even know what the questions were I thought it was a big accomplishment just to even show up and so to be in a very small setting where I could really interact and hear from others perspectives and then eventually gaining the courage to ask my own questions down the line uh, meant a lot to me and so that's that aspect in terms of the formal structure but I also want to say that there's a lot of extracurriculars that are also geared to professional development so Grace talked about uh, Bellarmine Law Society there's also the Ahana Management Law Society for so students of color also have a resource similar um, for Bridget I know there's probably a million right like between free health and all that and what comes to mind for me are some of the ones I took advantage of was uh, women in business there's also a women innovators network and I remember my very first mentor on campus which was actually actually my woman in business mentor and it was so cool just hearing about her because I always thought oh my gosh she's only three years older than me and I feel like she knows everything and I just need to keep talking to her to unlock some stuff you know what I mean and so it was so cool hearing from her perspective she's now full-time at Citigroup and I always looked up to her and always thought oh my gosh I want to be her um, so I appreciated having both best of both worlds kind of deal or I had that formal advising but I also had um, some peers alongside me uh, well, Walsh and Gian, you nailed it, um, but you sort of struck a chord with me that I want to follow up uh, with, I, again, is about outside of academics, were there things like job shadowing, internships, volunteer work, something that was maybe in the city of Boston, maybe something that you connected with an alum, again, research projects that were ongoing on campus. Was there some other piece that was really helpful to furthering your professional goals or you thought for you guys that are going to medical school law school you thought was really pivotal to either perfect that application or give you a little bit more purpose about what why you wanted to go to law why you wanted to be in medicine yeah sure um well one thing is going back to a little bit about what walsh was saying earlier about our alumni network being so strong in the fall i had an internship at a small law firm in Boston um, that does mesothelioma law. And it wasn't particularly an area of the law I had really ever known anything about, but I was looking for a fall internship um, that I wanted to put on my resume just for a little extra boost. Um, and the second the owner of the law firm, the like, head lawyer, heard that I was from BC, he was a BC graduate too. And he was like, oh my gosh, she must be great. Like, I'm definitely going to take on this girl. And we would just chat about all the Boston College stuff um, that he remembered from his time there and that I was experiencing. So I think like the strong, the strength of the alumni network is definitely a plus that you have there. And that helps you get these opportunities that, that end up being really rewarding. Great, great. Anybody else? Yeah, I am. For me, one of the most kind of daunting things when I was entering school was I had heard that you need to do bench research to get into medical school. Um, and so for me, I had never been exposed to any of that. I didn't know how to get involved. And right out of the gate, all, all of my professors, not just the science ones, like all my sociology professors, everyone does research. So if you want to do research, be it um, in a natural science area, our biology department does research on HIV and AIDS, cancer, um, so many. I'm not involved in the lab, so I don't know all the lists, but I'm involved in research in the sociology department. And so for me, I found out that bench research wasn't my forte, but research in the social sciences and the more clinical people-oriented side, that was what really got me passionate. And so um, I talked about that in my interviews when they asked what research experience did I have? That's good. That's good. How about if I ask this question? Hey, Walsh, can you hear me? I think I'm back. I don't know what's <laughs> been happening. I think I'm here. Um, how about like the culture around the, the job process, the graduate school process? Do you find your classmates are supportive? Are they really serious about it? When you go to an information session, are there tons of people there? Were there were there a lot of people interested in you know getting an internship and observing uh, a, a law firm or getting involved in research? Do you feel like this is a campus that has a lot of ambitious students that and the culture around seeking professional 
uh, positions, getting into law school and medical school. It, it's a, it's a, it's a real serious, serious atmosphere. Yeah, I would definitely absolutely say so. Um, I was just about to say one of the other resources that I relied upon, apart from, you know, the Career Center or the Alumni Network was definitely the cohort of students that were also along for the ride with me, you know, the other kids I always constantly see at, you know, the McKinsey information session or the city or the Barclays information sessions. It's the same people that you see um, doing this, you know, putting in the same work that you were putting in. Um, and so I really think that helped me because I had a ton of interview partners. Um, consulting is very case interview heavy, behavioral interview heavy when it comes down to recruitment. And so having people to practice with definitely helps. Um, and I think what's really significant is that at BC, I've never felt like I've had to like cut someone off in order to, you know, get to know another person or to get a leg up on an interview. But there's not a lot of cutting down that necessarily happens that other people are really willing to help you like I had a ton of my friends who were going through the same process as me helping me through my interviews go through my resume read through my cover letter and at the same time I was obviously willing to help them as well so I think that just seeing everyone you know be go-getters be ambitious but at the same time recognize that this is not a zero-sum game that we're all trying to get jobs and we can only help each other uh, was definitely really cool right Anybody else? Yeah, I definitely second that. I think there's a great deal of value in reflecting in groups. So while, of course, there's plenty of opportunities to shadow one on one. For me, I definitely just enjoyed it more going into these um, going into the city of Boston with a group, especially just logistics wise and then being able to again like reflect on it. And so the things that really come to mind were um, when organizations open themselves up to BC students and getting the connection. So I've been to the Federal Reserve Bank in Boston. This is when I was really in my stint of I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just yeah. shooting my shot everywhere. So I've been to the Federal Reserve Bank. Um, I went to the financial district in Boston. So I remember going to one of the big four um, accounting groups with uh, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, um, a couple more just here and there. But another uh, class that really sticks out to me too is Tech Trek. Um, there's two that happen during the year. There's Tech Trek East and Tech Trek West. So Tech Trek West is where um, students go. Um, it's a bit selective. It's just about, I would say, like one section of a class, so maybe around 30 students that go. Don't quote me, um, but that, that's the, the ballpark. And so students head off into Silicon Valley and get to check out places like Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the respective kind of organizations over in the East, except more so like Wall Street heavy. Um, and those opportunities, like I, like Walsh was saying, is really cool to do with a group um, just because it really just feeds into the kind of culture that's alive there at BC that's very supportive. Everybody wants to do well. And I also find that I learn a lot better when I'm with others uh, okay. just to figure out what I want to do. It's all a part of the process. Um, let me ask you guys this. Um, in all of the different outcomes that you're heading towards, the two people in the business world, <clears throat> one, one going to medicine, one going to law. I mean, law, I mean, the social sciences and the humanities. Um, medicine, you're talking about someone in, the, in STEM, the natural sciences, maybe a little bit of the, the social sciences, obviously business for the two of you guys. Is there another element academically at BC that you feel enhanced your knowledge enhanced your portfolio that you're bringing to law school or you're bringing to business um i mean it's very easy for you if you're thinking about medical school to take all of your courses in one specific area and not be affected by or feel there's an intersection between other aspects but that's not how bc works you're going to have to be involved in some other things the core curriculum requires it but we hope it benefits students have you guys in any of your perspective, again, destinations, got some advantage and some value from taking courses that aren't necessarily directly leading to your outcome, but are very BC type courses? And maybe you, again, you felt the value that came with that. Absolutely. Um, the core, the Jesuit curriculum is applicable to just being a worldly human being in the grown-up world like you have to understand how what your interests your subject area like medicine how it relates to just look at what we're facing today the economics and healthcare, how they relate and how we can get our world running again um i had so many questions in my interviews that were not science-based they were more um why is there poverty and how can we help patients that come from different backgrounds than us and that 
rests on understanding different perspectives and drawing on your social science understanding, your um, natural science, your sociology. So very much so like learning to integrate every subject area that rests on like our core curriculum and then also means that's how you are a supportive and meaningful person in the real world beyond BC. Anybody else? Yeah, I can definitely speak to a class. I took a class called uh, a seminar in business ethics. And so this is definitely a little more geared towards interdisciplinary study, but I was studying philosophers like Kant, Hegel, Rand, and seeing how you could take ideas that seem like are only meant to be in classrooms, only meant to be in academia, and how it influences decision making on like things like if you should cut dividends as a company to how you should lay off workers if you have to do so, to what other stakeholders you think of outside of shareholders, such as the communities that you're in, the employees that you have. Um, and I think that BC with its whole ideals of taking all these disparate, uh, disparate places and combining them into a decision where you're integrating all your quantitative, qualitative social skills. Um, in that specific class, I just saw my professor and everyone around me just take that really, uh, you know, take that and really run with it, with that idea of just saying, yes, we know all these ideas, all these theories, how do we come together and make a decision that really impacts a lot of people? And so, I don't know, just that dialogue that happens at BC is really cool. Do you think in general, just as a general point, do you think that going to school in and around Boston has some embedded advantages for people in the job market or applying to graduate school? I mean, do you just think cities, particularly Boston, the best city in the world, as some people have said, um, gives people an advantage or gives people resources that they may not have been able to get otherwise in other places? Yeah, I mean, in terms of me being someone who's local and has kind of known Boston, I never knew that it could be such a powerhouse, not just for financial services, not just for healthcare, but in terms of any industry, the fact that you can go and shadow anybody, that the Career Center has a whole database of current alums who are willing to have a BC student follow them around for a day. Um, for me, my junior year internship was actually at PricewaterhouseCoopers here in Boston. And I think that the biggest reason why I got that job was because the managing director, the associates, the vice president, all were BC alumni. Um, so that maybe speaks to the alumni part, but the fact that also Boston is just such a hub for so much industry that there's so much opportunity to see business in action, to see other industries in action, like healthcare, like biotech, like pharma. Um, it's just a really cool city to be around. Not only to mention all the other college students that are here around, um, what's the number that we throw around? Like 180,000 undergraduates that are in Boston during the school year. That's just so many people, not only to learn from, but also to say to the world, we have so much intellectual talent here in the city of Boston. There has to be you know, ample opportunity for everyone to experience, you know, just the concentration of college students that are here. Um, hey, let's give a shout out to our friends. I'm talking to four seniors. What about your roommate? What about your best friends? Like, can one or two of you, can, can all of you talk about one or two of your friends that you're super proud of and what destination they're off to? Uh, Grace, why don't you start? Sure. Um, my roommate, I'm really lucky from freshman year, we've roomed together and she's basically my best friend. It's kind of, it did not happen randomly. We met on Facebook beforehand and arranged to room together and I've been really lucky with it. But she actually next year is going to be doing a year of working before continuing on to law school. So she always wanted to be a lawyer. She wants to do sports law. Um, but she kind of wanted a year of working experience to get that on her resume first and to see how that's going to go. She's actually going, going to work for her dad's manufacturing company um, down in Asheville, North Carolina next year. So I'm excited to visit her in North Carolina. I've never been, so. Uh, Bridget. Yeah, so um, my roommate, her name is Michaela, and she started off on the pre-med track as well. And then she switch to political science and international studies and didn't really know what she wanted to do. And now she's off and looking to do a year of service, a year of teaching through either um, City Year or Teach for America, and then eventually wants to go 
into um, the Middle East and help them solve problems such as food insecurity and other um, social justice issues. So I'm super proud of her. How about you, Walsh? Uh, roommates, friends that you're particularly proud of that are going into different directions? Yeah, um, someone I'm really proud of, Ariel. She um, was my neighbor in the mods this year, uh, a part of senior housing, and she's going to uh, the University of Oregon to go to uh, art school to help uh, basically be a curator, like an art museum curator. And I thought that was really cool. So she's an art history major here. And um, that's just something that you don't hear often at any university. So the fact that BC, you know, kind of has the resources, has our own museum, but could really help her get to where she wants to be as a curator. I don't know, that's really cool. That is. And Gian, how about you? Yeah, so I'm gonna give my shout out to my roommate, Alexis. Uh, she wasn't even in the business school. It wasn't really something for her she, at the time. And then slowly she started really getting into business, um, attending those informational meetings along with me. And that's something I really wanna note is you don't have to be in the Carroll School of Management to take advantage of these in the same both ways. You can attend these informational meetings however you want. And so she found a, a love for business. She ended up interning for Citigroup, got there full time, but then actually then went over to BlackRock, uh, the largest asset management group. And so ever since uh, she got that full time, she's been chilling, she said. So what a life for her senior year. <laughs> uh, someone did ask that maybe my last question will be just given the state of affairs in our country and in the world, um, have, have any of your programs uh, reached out? Uh, have any of your employers reached out about alternative start dates or different plans, plans to be online? Uh, where do things stand every place? Yeah, for me specifically, um, I got an email the other week saying that we have our offers intact, that Deloitte is still giving us jobs, which is definitely a big relief to hear and that they're gonna make a decision in the next couple of weeks about if we're moving start dates, if they're gonna start remotely. Um, but from what I've heard from current people who work there, it sounds like they're just gonna push us towards the end of 2020 in terms of when we're gonna start. But I think that assurance that I still have a job is, is <laughs> definitely really big. Sure, sure. Jian? Yeah, same, um, same sort of reassuring. Um, announcement from uh, from General Electric Healthcare. And what's been nice too, as, as a part of that reassurance, they also shared with us that they're still alive and well, they still continue to operate. And they actually just did a partnership with Ford to be creating 50,000 ventilators each month, which is really cool to hear that, you know, I'll be joining a team like that and over, uh, hopefully by the end of the year too, Walsh. <laughs> Bridget? Um, I feel like I'm in the same boat as college students, honestly. Um, the other week I had my accepted students day on Zoom as well. Um, and for them, they actually, so the same question came up, like is our white coat ceremony, our like beginning of the year kind of induction to medical school, it's a huge, huge celebration. The question was, what's gonna happen? Um, and in for Boston University, their mindset is, we're hoping that at the first week of August, we can still have all these celebrations and be together in person. So they're kind of taking it week by week, seeing what happens. Grace. Pretty much the same for me. I haven't gotten much um, communication from the University of Pennsylvania yet. I think they don't wanna say anything and have us be scared about not starting in the fall, um, but I'm sure they are making arrangements. Uh, I don't want to be a doomsdayer. We all hope this coronavirus situation is over by the fall and by the summer, but I think they'll, they'll, they'll be preparing to do online classes just in case of, of that same type of thing. Well, obviously we had to let you guys go a little bit earlier than we'd like to. We like to celebrate Marathon Monday and the arts festival and showdown and senior week and all these things with you on campus, we had to let you go early. And as sad as you were, we were devastated because uh, I vicariously celebrate these things every year with you guys <laughs> uh, as a college student <laughs> myself. Um, so we hated seeing you go. Uh, you saw Father Leahy's address that he's hopeful that you guys can come back for a ceremony uh, in October. And we certainly hope that that's uh, feasible and boy it'd be great to send you guys off in the style that um, you should after all the work you've done uh, not just me but all of us are really proud of what you're able to do uh, on campus and we wish you guys the best of luck whether that's uh, not too far away like down the street at that other place 
or further away. Uh, yeah. Right. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> um, uh, we're a big fan. I'm a big fan. So I certainly wish you the best of luck. And for all the work that you've done for our office, we're really going to miss you. For our viewers, again, we have uh, multiple programs going on this week. Later tonight, it's about California and the West Coast. Uh, tomorrow, I have a program just for freshmen that are just speaking. Um, uh, later in the week, it's uh, STEM at Boston College, the Midwest at Boston College. Uh, we have a lot of things on tap. So if you want to get more student perspective, which is really the most important part, uh, there are plenty of programs that you can tap into. Uh, for the four of you, thanks for giving up a little bit of time. Again, we miss you. Uh, congratulations on all your outcomes. I hope to celebrate with you guys all real soon together at Chestnut Hill, okay? And for all of you viewing tonight, uh, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of time. Follow up with questions if you have them, and we'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Catch y'all. Good night.